Now, I have great pleasure in welcoming to our assembly Mr. Mark Rutte, the Prime Minister of the Netherlands. Mr. Rutte, you have a background in human resources and you first joined the government in 2002 as State Secretary for Social Affairs and Employment. Since then, you have also served as State, State Secretary for Education, Culture and Science. You led your party to success in the 2010 general election and you have been Prime Minister now for four years. I invite you to take the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bailey, for your very kind introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a real honor to speak to you here in my home city at the 60th annual session of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly. And I hope that over the past few days, we have shown how much we appreciate your coming to our country. I would like to extend a special welcome to Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. Jens, good to see you. Uh, I know you as someone who knows hard to build support and to get results. You have the ability to strike a balance between consultation and action. So I do believe you are the right man for the job and I very much look forward to work with you. Being NATO Secretary General is of course a magnificent job. Even so, the first person to hold the post, Lord Hastings Ismay, had to be talked into accepting it in 1952 by none other than Winston Churchill. As a military man, Ismay was concerned that there would be too much red tape and too little action. But Churchill won him over by saying, and I quote, that NATO provided the best, if not the only, hope of peace in our time. And that's exactly what NATO has been since it began 65 years ago. Our best hope for peace and security. That's still true today, especially now that Europe is faced with an arc of instability that is much wider than we once thought it would be. Many people are talking of a new reality, of a new North-South divide, even of a new Cold War. And while I don't think it is wise in today's multipolar world to draw simple historical parallels, one thing is certain. Things are happening fast on the eastern and on the southern edges of NATO's European territory. And the changes in the geopolitical relations will last for a long time to come. Think back to last year. Who could have imagined Russia's aggression in Ukraine? Or such violent Islamic fundamentalism right on NATO's doorstep? Almost every day we are confronted with the fact that we cannot take peace and security for granted. The way we live in democracies governed by the rule of law is at stake. NATO itself has made a substantial contribution to peace, security and prosperity in Europe. For 65 years, it has been a key defender of the norms and values we cherish as Western allies. Outside its own territory too, because if we want to protect our freedoms and civil rights, we have to go beyond our own borders. We have to join forces, join forces globally by helping to maintain the international legal order. That's in our own interest too, of course. By exporting stability, we limit the chances of importing instability. And NATO has a role to play here, along with the UN, the OSCE, the EU and other international organizations because global threats demand a global response. I'm glad 
that NATO has responded appropriately to Russia's aggression towards Ukraine and the recent developments in North Africa and the Middle East. For the Netherlands, NATO's added value is not in question. Quite the opposite. We have seen recently, once again, how transatlantic cooperation provides the security guarantees that Europe needs to make it relatively stable as a continent. How would countries like Poland and the Baltic states have felt in recent months without that collective security umbrella? Defending NATO's territory is still the mainstay of our alliance. So it's good that we reaffirm this principle in a joint declaration at the recent summit in Wales. The Netherlands will, of course, continue its active contribution to NATO's efforts. That applies not only to Operation Resolute Support in Afghanistan and the immediate assurance measures we decided on earlier this year. It also applies to strategic decisions for the longer term, like investing in cybersecurity and ballistic missile defense, agreeing on the Readiness Action Plan and setting up the Very High Readiness Joint Task Force. Our priorities for the month ahead are clear. It's also clear that these activities will cost a lot of money, more than is now available, in fact. So it's good that we decided in Wales to boost our defense spending over the next 10 years. This is necessary, but it also imposes a duty on us. A duty to show our taxpayer that their money is being spent smartly and effectively. Not only when it comes to national defense budget, but to NATO's budget too. NATO is already working to make its financial affairs more transparent. And I sincerely hope that the 28 member countries can make further agreements on this in the future. After all, transparency and public support, they go hand in hand. Ladies and gentlemen, as our best hope for peace, NATO deserves that public support. So let's continue to build on that together. Let's continue to build on our broad transatlantic security agenda and make ourselves resilient to the threats of today, tomorrow and beyond. Thank you so much.